the whole lot. And then that's the copy of what you're going to copy on. Sure. Okay, so um, so it's recording now then. So uh, you mentioned before you're doing some, you've done a number of races, you're about kind of 45 minutes for Half Ironman. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but you're, you know, you're pretty confident in the water, you're pretty happy in the water. You don't yeah, have I've had a couple of, well, when you're in the group of wheel in the melee, I've had a couple of, yeah. Yeah, had to go through for a couple of minutes to yeah, get okay. down and stuff. Yeah, generally fine. Yeah. Generally, you're, you're okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, and uh, in terms of um, kind of, do you feel like you might be uh, getting like a build, like a feeling a little bit anxious in terms of maybe holding your breath a little bit? You mentioned that you, yeah, you it's, when yeah, you started, it's, you may have done that a little bit. Do you think you're better at that now? Yeah, getting better. I think yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, but yes. Okay. All right. Um, right. And so if I try and push too hard in a session. When I get short on breath, then there's another necessary technique starts to fall apart a bit. And yeah, yeah, okay. I take, start cutting corners trying to get a breath in yeah. earlier in the stroke. And yeah, 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 okay, that's fine. Well, off of it. yeah, well, I noticed when you, um, I mean, I know we, I wasn't, you didn't yeah. know I was going to time you on your first 100 meters, but I did. Yeah. Um, and you went 25 seconds for the first length, 25 for the second, 30 for the third, and 32. Yeah, I was trying to slow down a bit because I was, uh, I mean, I noticed I was pushing it a bit harder than. Yeah, for a warm up. It's it's interesting but, just to yeah. see. I mean, the fact that you can swim a length in twenty five seconds, yeah. um, which is six forty pace, four hundred meters, yeah. is a damn sight quicker than you're anywhere near that what you're yeah, doing yeah. for the full distance. So yeah. you can you can get through the water quite quickly if you need to. Yeah. So we need to look at how we can make you more efficient yeah. through yeah. moving through the water. All right. So we we'll start from the uh, the side here. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So. The first thing that we look at really is head position yeah. and what the recovery of the arms is doing. Yeah. So the recovery is obviously as the, as the arm comes back over the water. Now the first thing I notice, and this is this is one of the major issues with you really, which is something that we will definitely be working on today, yeah. is this arm here, it's recovering out the water, yeah. and it's coming nice and high, that's fine, so there's plenty of clearance there. Some people, if they're too low, they might it's not good for broken yeah. water if they're catching the surface of the waves yeah. or people's heads or whatever. So you've got a nice bit of clearance, but that hand is heading over that way, over that way, rather than going the way you're traveling. Yeah. So that's what you call a crossover. Oh, is he going to cross in front of that? Yeah, so exactly, right? yeah, yeah. So crossover. And you can see at the arm, from this angle, you can't really see it very clearly, and we'll see it much clearly, more clearly from above. Have you ever seen yourself in video before? No. It's always quite surprising yeah, about yeah, what you actually yeah. look like. So um, there's no kind of nowhere to <laughs> nowhere to hide with this kind of thing. But it's that's exactly what we're here for, isn't yeah. it? Okay. So so we know we're kind of we're going in a little bit at an angle and we're crossing over a little bit. You're breathing just on the left hand side. Yeah. Good thing here is your head is quite nice and low in the water, which is good. A lot of people will lift the head right out of the water. And then this arm is coming over here, and we're doing the same thing. So we're coming over. And this arm is spearing over in this direction. Yeah. Now, what happens when you do that is your legs down here, what they ultimately are, are they, they balance up what's happening at the front end of the stroke. Yeah. So if we just take you forward a little bit until so you go under the water. Okay. So we're going under the water here. Now, your legs don't do very much in terms of they don't have much of a kick. So I guess if someone gives you a kickboard and asks you to kick you over, you go very far. No, I, I can just like add anything, but it's, yeah, it's done. Tough. Dying it's tough. That, and that's normal for yeah. most triathletes, especially all kind of age group triathletes who, who are not natural swimmers as, as the kids and things like that. So that's nothing too much to worry about. Um, but what we do want to do is we want to try and get this up here, yeah. okay? Because you're very low in the water. Yeah. This big kick here is not so much problem with the kick, this is related to what's happening yeah. on the front end of the stroke, because you're just balancing yourself out. Yeah. Right. So, we want to get the body up. The body is quite low, because you're not traveling particularly quickly. Um, there's a few things which are causing it, but the faster you go, then naturally your legs will start to kind of travel a little bit higher through the water. Okay. Now, I asked you earlier um, what kind of swim type you thought you were, and, and you weren't sure of the swim type. So let's kind of quickly show you the, uh, the swim types that I'm talking about. Um, yeah, where are they? 
top, top, top. Maybe does he see it? Is it? Right. Yeah, it moves every time I look at it. There we go, swim type. So I was looking for folder. So we've got the Arnie. And Arnie is somebody who just kind of all power, you know, their upper body and they just plow the way through the water. But they've actually got quite a lot of rhythm and timing to their stroke. Yeah. Uh, a bambino, you might see a lot, kind of women a lot. A lot of bambinos are women where they're very weak and dainty at the front end. But their legs might be going 10 to a dozen behind. Yeah. Kicktastic. Uh, again, mostly, mostly women, but have got a mega kick, yeah. pushing them through the water. Overglider, which is what you are. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you about that in a second. A smooth, like the classic pool swimmer with long but nice, really nice smooth yeah. stroke. And then the swingers are like good quality triathletes, yeah. straight arm, like the ground leads. Yeah. Okay, straight arm recovery, but a load of rhythm and tight tempo to it. Bang, bang, bang through yeah. the water. Right. So overgliders. What ha normally happens with an overglider is, and it's called an overglider because you extend on the one side yeah. and you're breathing only to the left. So you'll extend on the right with the right arm and then there's a big pause. Big pause and a big push down here. Okay. That arm is sweeping down straight as well. Okay. Now, what happens when there's a pause is the body will sink because you're losing momentum. Oh, you can see the legs coming down like that. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And then what happens then is you get something called a kick start, which I could hear you going like yeah. this. Right? And your body senses that you need to get some momentum again. Yeah. So it throws in a big kick. And you're, you're knocking against the, um, the lane rope on the way down. Yeah. Perfectly natural. But again, it's all, this is all caused by what's happening on the back. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at you on the way back. So there's, if I just play it in real time, so I'll slow it down to play it. So you take a stroke on that side, yeah. and then there's a glide and a pause, yeah. and then the other arm comes in. It's not massively obvious on there actually, but it's, that's what's, that's what's happening. See it. As well, yeah. yeah, and then a big bang kick to get you going again, and then you're off. All of these problems are related to, or largely related to your alignment. Okay, so if I show you, uh, I'll show you Mr. Smooth himself, John Urban Hazel. Now, if you've seen the, um, if you've seen the, have you seen the Mr. Smooth animation? Yeah, I have. Yeah? yeah. Well, this is this guy, John Urban Hazel, who is exactly who this is modelled on. Yeah. So, you smooth, as you can imagine. And what I'm trying to show you here is the alignment. Okay? So if you look at how he spears into the water, I mean, look at how straight he is in the water. It's just ridiculous. I mean, people give their hind teeth to be like that. Yeah. All right? All the way down that arm, all the way down through the body, down through the leg. Dead straight. All right? So if we have a look at yourself then, the best angle to show this from is from above. Now, this is not going to look anything like that. All right? There's going to be a lot of yeah. legs and arms going kind of sideways. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly the issue. We need to get you going straight. Yeah. All right? So, let's take it back. Take it down a tiny bit. So you push off from the wall. Perfect. You know? Yeah. Nice, you're holding a nice shape there, nice and straight. And then. It's not too bad there, your legs are crossing over here, but that's going to be a little bit of a crossover. So, what's happening with this recovering arm, if you look where it actually goes, you get it all bent out of shape, okay? So your arm is heading over that way. This is good stuff, by the way. Yeah, okay? yeah. This, is, this is stuff that we can really get our teeth stuck into. Yeah. People go, oh my god, this is awful, but I think this is really positive stuff, because yeah. there's something yeah, that's in this. Yeah. Okay, and then I've here we go. I've always focused on trying to like, you know, get my legs closer without actually looking at what's causing it. So yeah. Like, you know. yeah, yeah. Now, this is where we have this big kick at the back here, big separation. You've got a big parachute going on here ultimately. Yeah. So, and then this recovering arm comes in, oops, comes in, and is heading over this way. 
right? Yeah. So the, all these things combined, the, the, um, the pause in the stroke caused by the overglide, yeah. the crossing over, all of, and, and the kickstart and the splitting of the legs are all kind of adding to this pot, yeah. which is just causing you to slow down every time you go through the stroke cycle. So what we're going to do, what we're going to work on today, is getting you more like Jono, all right? So getting you much more straight, getting used to what it feels like to spear in and hold yourself in a nice straight alignment. If we can get you to be anywhere near, kind of, even if it's just halfway between, it's going to be a massive improvement for you. Okay, so the drills we're going to go through then, Too many buttons to press on. Yeah, uh, actually, no, it's not that. So kick on the side drill. Now you will need to get some fins for these because a lot of these drills do uh, require the use of fins. And the reason for that is because um, you might, if, if you go to swim with any clubs or anybody, kind of a group of mates or whatever, and you try and do drills, most people will spend most of the time focusing on breathing because they haven't got the momentum to hold this position in the drill. Um, so what happens with the uh, with having fins on is it gives you the extra little propulsion that you need. So the time to actually focus on what you're doing. All right. It gives you that push at the back end. It's it's a nightmare seeing people trying to do drills without fins yeah. and they're just wasting their time half the time. All right. So get yeah. some fins and I'll, uh, I'll bring the box in. I'll show you which ones we use. So all we're doing here is we'll push off from the wall and you kick all the way on your side, simple as that, okay? And I'll talk you through it. <laughs> so what this gets you to do is, is focus on staying nice and stretched out, shoulder blades back, chest out, and also turning to breathe and keeping that arm where it is. Because if you look at what happens when you breathe, that arm's gone. See, it's gone. So you've got nothing in front of it. That's called, you should always have a hand in front of the head here to provide support at the front of the stroke. Otherwise, your hand goes, you sink down with it. Yeah? yeah. So this, t this ticks a number of boxes for you. Just a simple drill. It takes a bit of getting used to, but once you can, that's, that's what we call the importance of a session like this. So you know that you're in the right position. Yeah. All right? So kick along on your side, turning to breathe, and keeping that leading arm high keeping it straight. Simple as that. Okay, so we're going to spend some time working on that today. Yeah. And then um, a natural progression from that, and you can start you'll start to see where we go with these drills, is six one six drill, which is exactly the same, kick on the side, but six kicks and a full stroke onto the other side. Okay? So nice and controlled, spearing in, extending straight. And you can start to see how we work on getting much straighter. Yeah. yeah. Simple as that. Okay. And then once you've got six one six mastered, oops, we go to six three six, and we build up the stroke. One. Two, three, and onto the other side. All right. Now this will require you to breathe on both sides, but you'll be kicking on your side when you breathe. Yeah. So you, I'm assuming you probably struggle to breathe on your non-breathing side. Yeah, no, I can. I can do. It's just like, it's, I think it's not as it's even worse on that side. Of the okay. Side, all right, that's fine. A lot of people really, really struggle to breathe on the non-breathing side, on the on the less favoured side. Yeah. Um, this will be all right doing it this way because you are literally kicking. You're completely on your side, so you're turned to breathe tend to breathe much more easily. Yeah. Right? I'm not I'm not too concerned about you being super uniform and bilateral breathing and all that kind of stuff. The biggest thing for us is to get you straightened up. Yeah. Right? So we're going to work on your alignment. Just doing this stuff is going to sort out your legs to a long to, to, to a large extent. Okay. So there are three drills we're going to work on. The other thing I want to do, we're actually going to do this first, is we're going to look at doing some work on your kick. 
Now, which is a bit of a, may sound like a bit of a contradiction um, based on what I've just said before. But we don't use, in swim smooth, we don't use the kick for propulsion, but we use it for balance, all right? So the kick still has to be um, uh, effective in terms of you need to know to point your toes, you need to know how to kick, all right? So you'll be kicking from the hip rather than the knee. And we'll do some drills. Um, in fact, if I show you under the water here, you've got typical runner's feet in terms of... At 90 degrees. They're at 90 degrees. They're at 90 degrees. Yeah. So, you just out of shot there, but we'll come in in a second. But they're straight down. All right. Imagine the water pressure coming here. They, they are. There's, a, there, there's, a, there's an exercise we do called anchor feet which is where we get people to swim with their toes pointed, and then we get them to swim literally and do it on purpose with their feet down, yeah. and it is like someone pulling on your ankles. Yeah. It's a yeah. huge yeah. difference, all right? So it just, it's just worth spending some time doing some drills, and I'll put them on here so you've got a copy of it, yeah. um, just to focus in on what the legs should be doing. Yeah. Um, and you can practice these drills every single time you push off from the start. Yeah. You can push off and do these little kicks. So uh, the ballerina drill, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? I'll see what I can never find these drills whenever I'm looking for them. Maybe it's some. No, I refuse to believe that. It's in the first folder. It's not in there for some reason. I don't know where that's gone. The ballerina drill. It might not be in there because the ballerina drill is, is a vertical drill. So you just do it at the side and it, you just practice moving your legs backwards and forwards. Just to kind of get the idea. And then what we do is you move you on, and I'll take you through it. Move you on to the torpedo drill, which is simply pushing off from the wall, head down, and then practicing what we've just done vertically. So good kick and keeping the toes pointed yeah. and then continuing to swim but focusing on doing the same thing with the legs. Yeah. All right? Simple as that. All right. But I'll go through all these in a lot more detail. Yeah. Other things, like, I've been trying to, so I don't know, I'll say I do a thing, one kick per stroke effectively. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to do some sessions in the right time to six. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in your thoughts on the one? Um, yeah, I mean, ideally, your stroke would be better off with a six-beat kick, um, but it's quite difficult to, to develop that if you're not used to doing it. Um, ultimately, your swims are going to be in a wetsuit, um, so it's going to it's going to pay you to. We'll have a chat about this afterwards, maybe, but to, it's going to pay you to do some technique work where we work on the things that we've done, but also do your fitness sessions where a lot of it is going to be with a pool boy and focusing on having a really good catch and pull through and keeping those legs together with your toes pointed. Yeah. Right? And don't worry about the kick too much. Okay. Um, ultimately, um, if you look at, in fact, if we look at, it is difficult to know how your, your stroke will, will evolve over time. Yeah. And you will likely to be, you'll be likely to become either a swinger or a smooth, which are the two top level kind of swim types. So if you look at, um, if we look at a swinger, sorry, if you look at smooth first of all, swingers on there, Smooth, high elbow recovery, it's longer, rangier stroke, yeah. six feet kick. Okay. Swingers, more like your kick, yeah? yeah? So these rely on a harder, uh, sorry, a higher arm turnover. Yeah. But the kick is just literally yeah. providing balance at the back of the stroke. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're probably going to end up more with a kick like this. Yeah. All right, which um, I um, so have you heard of Brett Sutton? Do you know Brett Sutton yeah, at yeah, all? Yeah. yeah. Well, I get mentored by Brett Sutton. I've just come yeah. back from from camp with Brett, and um, he teaches all of his athletes to do two big kick. Yeah. Because you're gonna ride your bike afterwards. Yeah. You know, you want to keep that energy level down as low as possible. That's a two big kick is um, is definitely the way to go for that. But don't worry about that for now. Yeah. That will yeah. naturally evolve over the coming weeks. Yeah. All right. So don't let's not try and kind of overthink yeah. it too much.
All right. Yeah. Any questions? No. No. Okay. Right. Well, I'll turn this off then. And uh, just.